Hello Sunday School class. This week we are learning about Jesus teaching difficult truths. And I know that we normally talk about things that probably seem kind of difficult, uh, but this one is probably the number one difficult thing. Um, so let's jump right into it. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 6. We're going to read verses 52 through 69. It says, The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? And then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives, fle who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Katie. Everybody say hi to Noki. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, let's go to verse, where were we? Verse, we'll start in verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who were who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. <laughs> hey guys, um, so I don't have like an official object lesson for this one, so you can just, you know, watch my cute little kitty. Isn't he adorable? Um, <laughs> um, but, so Jesus was like, just kind of threw this out there. He's suddenly like, hey, like, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And it sounds kind of horrifying if like he just spits it out and everybody was pretty horrified um, but what they didn't realize is that he wasn't talking about physically eating him um, he wasn't condoning cannibalism or you know bloodshed or anything horrific like that um, it goes back to uh, the bread of life which I'm sure you guys have heard of before Jesus is the bread of life and that he's the Lamb of God right and so he is what provides our sustenance, so not our physical sustenance necessarily. I mean, he takes care of us, but his body, you know, when he talks about that, it's um, our spiritual sustenance. And his blood is, you know, what forgives us of our sins. So it's a spiritual life. It's not our physical, you know, we're like supposed to actually eat them. <laughs> um, so... I know you guys have all done communion before and you know so that's um, a reminder about you know we're not literally you know eating the body of Christ or drinking his blood but it's just a reminder of that he died for us on the cross and he shed his blood for us and that's how we remember him um, but so with these verses when Jesus was talking to the Jews, they were just not wanting to have it. And even some of his own disciples, so not the 12, but the other people that were following him, 
um, they all were kind of horrified as well, and they, a bunch of them, stopped following him. A bunch of them just left. Um, and so, what it, like, instead of them, like, needing to accept it literally, again, they needed to realize that it, it takes a step of faith to go from the law, which the law said, you know, don't eat any blood, don't kill people, <laughs> all that stuff, to grace. So, um, going to, you know, accepting that what Jesus did for us is a fulfillment of the law and not in contradiction to the law, um, but that, you know, it's his grace that saves us and it's a spiritual life, not, you know, our physical eating of whatever. Um, so I want you to think for a minute, because I don't have anything like tangible to do this. You guys are going to have to like use your imaginations. Um, but so I can't see very well without my glasses. So if I take off my glasses, everything's like super fuzzy and I wish you could see how fuzzy it is for me. But on the other side of my living room, I can see like this brown splotchy rectangle thing. And I can see like a white splotch kind of like diagonally through the middle of it. Now, I have no clue what that is, except that I remember what it is, but looking at it, like, I wouldn't know what it is, right? But as soon as I put my glasses on, I see it's a wooden picture frame with dark, like, background and a gray wolf, and there's a moon behind the wolf, and he's standing on, like, a ledge. Now I can see all this detail. So sometimes people, like, in the Holy Spirit to, um like your glasses, so the glasses help you see, so everything's all fuzzy and indistinct, and then you put on your glasses, and oh, like I can see clearly, and I can see the details, um, and that's all good and great, but especially reading this section, um, I don't think that's the best analogy for the Holy Spirit. So Jesus told his disciples, like, you know, you, know, you need to live by the Spirit, like this is a spiritual thing it's not physical and the Holy Spirit is what helps us understand these things without the Holy Spirit we can't you know without the Holy Spirit we would be horrified and be like oh what on earth is he talking about like this is so weird and but the whole entire Bible would be very very confusing right so I want you guys to take a minute and close your eyes okay close your eyes do it <laughs> so close your eyes and imagine that you are in a dark room. There's like, not like dark where like there's some like moonlight shining through the window or even dark like you're outside and there's like stars and stuff, like just pitch black like you're in a closet and the doors are all closed and there's no lights and there's nothing and it's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face. But then imagine that there's no walls and there's no ceiling and there's no floor and you're just kind of floating in this dark and you have no sense of direction or space or if you're standing or sitting or floating or anything else and it's just dark and you are completely lost and you have no idea where you are, where you're going, where you've been, like nothing, just black, okay? And now imagine that suddenly it's like bam, somebody turns the lights on and you're standing on solid ground in a middle of a beautiful, beautiful field of flowers and there's these gorgeous trees and the birds are singing and maybe there's like a little brook trickling by and everything's all beautiful and gorgeous and lovely and peaceful and bright and there's colors and then you look down at your feet and you see that there's a path and this path leads off into the distance and you know without a doubt that you need to follow this path and that you're gonna walk in this path and that you are being led and that you are um, loved and you're at peace and you have direction and you know what you're supposed to be doing with your life. So you start walking along this path, okay? So that's more like the Holy Spirit. Like you're, there's nothing, it's like dark, nothing, nobody, nothing anywhere and suddenly it's like bright light, colors, peace, and direction, and here we go. 
all right so that's more like the Holy Spirit and one of the things that we have to realize what Jesus was talking about like salvation and you know he is the bread of life and he is the Lamb of God and we have to partake of him in order to you know get salvation and to find God we can't do it by ourselves okay so if we're floating around in the void and we're lost it's not anything that we do that brings us to the light okay it's through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit without the spirits working we can't find the path okay we can never make it without the Holy Spirit guiding us I want you guys to take some time and really think about this concept okay so when you're witnessing to others you need to understand that it's not you that's going to convince them to follow Jesus it's the Holy Spirit and that when we're talking to them it's not um, like we get peace from Jesus and you know takes care of us so those are physical things but we're talking to people about spiritual things and it's really hard to understand no matter what you're talking about no matter how you explain it it's not something that makes a lot of sense to people especially people that don't know anything about Jesus or about the Bible right um, so I want you guys to do two things first I want you to think about what your greatest fear in sharing the gospel is and just think about it you could write it down if you wanted to talk to somebody you could talk to me or mr. Gerald or your parents or anybody else um, so think about what your greatest fear in sharing the gospel might be and then think about ways you can get over that so if you're just like shy or you feel awkward or you just feel like you don't have the right information like those are things that can be fixed like those are things that can be overcome those are things that you can work on right so figure out whatever your number one greatest fear in sharing the gospel is and do something about it okay and then um, something that might help you in the future when you're talking to somebody um, is think about what would you say to somebody if they asked you why following Jesus is worth it to you even if you lose everything else in this life why would you want to follow this Jesus person so think about that because that's basically your testimony right that's why you're following Jesus it's a very important question and you are welcome to talk to us about it and then one last thing that I wanted to leave you guys with because we're talking about the gospel so the Holy Spirit is what leads people to Jesus right that you know without the Holy Spirit no one's gonna get saved right and without Jesus no one can get to God so I thought that this would be a nice um, reminder kind of of one more way to share the gospel with people this one's kind of nice because if you are in a restaurant or somewhere and all you have is like a napkin and a pencil you can draw this out for people so first you draw a square on one side or a rectangle on one side and this is us or man and then on the other rectangle is God right so there's these like two cliffs and in the middle is this like chasm and you can't get from one side to the other side and that's sin that separates us from God and then you know draw the cross which is Jesus and Jesus is what connects us because no matter what we do we can't get across this path get across this you know valley on our own because the wages of sin is death right so we try to build a ladder or something it's just gonna fall and we're gonna die um, the only way to get across is Jesus so Jesus and his sacrifice and his blood is what connects us to Jesus through forgiveness of our sins right um, and you can look up different verses but um, the ones I wrote up here Romans 3 23 that's in all of these is what's called the Romans road um, even if you feel like you can't maybe memorize um, the whole verses which I highly strongly suggest doing maybe you could at least memorize the scripture references there's only four of them if you memorize these and then you have a Bible or your phone there's always Bible apps you can always get to a Bible um, you know then you would have the scripture references but that's at least a start so the um, just you know remember these and I'll put these in the notes for the YouTube video too um, but anyway, so just one more little tool to put in your toolbox I hope that you guys think about those questions okay um, think about sharing the gospel and how you feel about that and um, 
just know that Jesus Jesus offered us words of eternal life and he gives us eternal life and we should in turn turn around and share those words of eternal life with others, right? So, all right. Have a blessed week and I'll talk to you guys next weekend. Okay, right, bye-bye.